and thank you for joining us. Professor Stephen Kwekwasari is a Democracy and Development Fellow in Public Law and Justice at the Center for Democratic Development, CDD. Now, prof, on, on this particular issue, it appears over the period that the Electoral Commission has used this process of filing as a way of reducing the numbers of persons seeking to contest as president. We've seen that over time. So in this instance, we had 24 people who filed their nominations, pruned to, to 14, in fact, 13 as we have it now. Is this really one that concerns you, especially because we're going to get to a time when if all these, say, 30 people pick their forms and they go through and they do it right, there will be no other means of reducing the numbers and the Electoral Commission will have to allow them to, to contest. Uh, no, it doesn't concern me that uh, 30 people want to contest. That is the essence of democracy. Uh, we have to tolerate everyone or anyone who thinks he is competent and qualified enough to be president. What concerns me is if there was an unspecified and unknown process that was used to cut down the numbers that would be unconstitutional and that would be unethical. Now, this whole notion and exercise of disqualifying people and they going to court, it's almost become a ritual, a funny ritual we have to be a learning society so we don't repeat mistakes. What is stopping the Electoral Commission from digitizing this whole filing process? Why should people and parties and so many people have to come to the Electoral Commission's office on a certain day, stop whatever it is that they are doing? sit there for hours and then they go through and then they go and dance we can do that uh, in today's high-tech world we can do that digitally and the ec can then um, audit the submissions and instantaneously or within a few hours notify the party that your uh, application is complete and you have been admitted as a candidate or certain documents are missing and so update these documents so that we can expedite the process. I do believe both the filing and even the balloting for positions could all be digitized and it will save us all time and it will save us all the drama. On the proviso, that it won't be a black box, that the process will be subject to an audit by a credible independent accounting firm. So you see that anytime, I don't know whether the practice is common in Ghana, but it's, it's very common in the US, that on weekends when they are going to announce the lottery, it is announced by some accounting firm that gives people the comfort that there is no rigging because the process has been subject to an audit and the auditors are giving us reasonable assurance that whatever process has been marketed is indeed being followed. So my, my submission in brief is we shouldn't be afraid of many people running because that's the essence of democracy uh, we should evolve to use a process that is less cumbersome and that is less prone to errors digitization is the solution so, and then third mm -hmm. even the balloting can mm -hmm. be digitized and a lot of these rituals 
will be cut out. And we talk now, about in that. terms of the people who have been disqualified, we've been we've all been there before. We know they will go to court and then the court will say, yeah, allow them to do it. So why won't the EC instead of disqualifying them, just tell them, look, this is missing, so bring it. I mean, why do you have to disqualify someone merely because you claim they haven't submitted a tax form. Why don't you ask them, well, the tax form is missing, bring it. I just don't understand uh, the taking of that drastic action of disqualifying them when they could be given the opportunity to remediate whatever problem that the EC has found. And on, on that point that you make um, about the balloting and, and introducing digitalization in the process, and we're in, we're in that era, so you would expect that the issue will catch up. The, the, the process of balloting was as chaotic as you, we, we really, really couldn't have imagined. At some point, they had to take a, a, a green rubber bag that was used for, I don't know, they said they, they put the water, the water bottles that they came to serve the the parties with the, that rubber was what had the water in they took that green rubber that they used to serve take out take away parts and that's what they put the the papers in for the second balloting aside from that there were some rules that were agreed upon that the the parties wouldn't look into the rubber when they dip their hands in some looked and then also the objections that were raised around the table. And I know you've, you, you've seen this as well. I mean, that, 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 that chaos that characterized the entire ballot process. I want us to, uh, Professor Kukos, I can you hold on a bit for me. I'll play a bit of that and we'll, we'll take the conversation from there. Let's take a look at the, the chaos that characterized the entire balloting process and why this concern that it cannot continue. Were there no rules? What was the precedence? No procedures for this process? So much that you have to use polythene bags for, for the most important part of the balloting, that is the positioning of the parties in Ghana. Take a look. No, they are. They are. Check this. They check that. They are the same. Do you want me to show you the difference? Right. Show Hello. 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 H
MPP number one. Number one. Is it three? Yes. Number one. Oh, the officer. So this was what the, the video that generated the conversation about the, the suspicion of a possible swap. Uh, but then Noble Kosbianan, who was in the room for us, stood behind Evans Nemakon and uh, Peter McMenu and, and took the video from there. So I want us to take a look at that. Let's look at that video and then that will bring some clarity. Look. Number seven, NDC. Number seven, NDC. Number eight, NDC. Number eight, NDC. Number eight, NDC. Number eight, NDC. Number nine, CPD. What's the number one? You can now open your boss. Oh, what's your name? Oh, what's your name? You can now open your boss. You can now open your boss. You can now open your boss. You Number seven, NDC. Number eight, NDC. Number four, Mariana. Number five. So the the video on the screen, for the benefit of our people on radio, has Evans de Macon having the ball and opening the second ball that had the one in there. It was the first video that, with the angle it was captured, depicted that oh, there was some something suspicious that had happened. But the point of focus there as well is, is that green rubber on that table that the Electoral Commission used for the balloting. And then also the rules about they're not looking at Professor Kupo, sorry. So this, this, this is why I bring you in. And the, the, the chaos that we, we, we've heard and what you've seen as well in this entire balloting process, which you said at this point, there should have been some improvement in the systems in digitizing it, is it not? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I can't see the... Uh, pictures that you are showing me, but I, I can imagine uh, the chaos. And you begin to ask yourself, we spend so much money on this electoral process. Can't we figure out a better way to do these things without all this fanfare and chaos and shouting and fighting? What concerns me even more than the chaos is what I think could ultimately lead to the negation of everything that was done with respect to the balloting. I saw a clip where the, where the commission had said to the independent candidates, for whatever reason, they had to occupy the slots from 10 to 13, and 1 to 9 somehow was... Uh, restricted or was set aside for the political parties. In my mind, there's no lawful basis for this um, treating candidates differently depending on whether they are from a political party or whether they are, ind whether they are independent candidates. In fact, when I look at the names of the parties, I play this game that there are actually six political parties two congresses, one movement, and four independent. So going by what the commission was doing, perhaps 
the parties will go first, then the congresses, then the movement, and then the independent. No. Each of these people are running to be president. And you have to treat them in the same way. If this matter is litigated, I have concerns that what the uh, commission has done will not stand master and probably they would be asked to redo it treating all the candidates the same way i think uh, one of the candidates one of the independent candidates questioned why that was being done and as usual he wasn't giving a good reason he sat down and accepted it but i think it is something that should not have happened and something that in my mind is serious enough that it could put this whole process into, into doubt and into question. This is all because we don't have protocols. You see, there should be protocols for balloting that is agreed upon way before the balloting is done. And second, like I said, look, once you have protocols, uh, this whole balloting people need not be there. It could be done on TV for all of us to see you see an independent audit, uh, auditor who is drawing balls from a, a, a machine like they do in many places, including when we are watching soccer and they are balloting or they are uh, indicating who will play against who. You don't have all the teams there fighting. I, I want to be here. I want to be there. They just show it on TV. They put the balls in an end. They turn the end and ball number one drops. Ball number one represents MPP. MPP is number one. They do it again. Ball number two, NDC. NDC is number two, and so on and so forth. This shouldn't elicit the chaos that we are seeing on TV. We have been at this exercise for over three decades. And it bothers me that we are not getting better at doing it. We are actually getting worse at doing it. And, and, and we need to sit down. And, and, and ask ourselves, why can't we do things in a more streamlined way?